Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we, where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing this morning and it is then posted to our website for you to watch at your convenience. Uh, both of the live, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, for those of you that are not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, similar to your so-and-so state library. And so we provide services to all types of libraries in Nebraska, and we will have shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. So you should find things for public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, it's really anything and everything. Um, our only criteria really is it has something to do with libraries. Um, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. We do bring in guest speakers from around the country, some um, from Nebraska and around the country, um, but we also have Nebraska Li Library Commission staff that sometimes do um, presentations for us, and that's what we have this morning. Uh, with us today is Sally Snyder. Good morning, Sally. Good morning. Uh, she is our uh, coordinator of children and young adult library services here at the Library Commission. And Amy Owen, good morning, Amy. Hi. She's in our information services librarian in our reference department here at the Library Commission. And they are both going to talk about our Nebraska's One Book for Nebraska Kids and Teens program. Um, and since uh, I know how, uh, Sally, you mentioned talking about the history and whatnot from it, about it, I'm just gonna hand it over to you to um, tell us everything we need to know. Okay, thank you. Well, I just give you a little bit of background for anybody who doesn't know how this program started. When I became the youth services librarian here, which is a lot faster to say than my actual job title. Yes, yes. <laughs> my job title, but um, I shorten it some. Sharon Osenga, who was then the administrator for the Meridian Library System, um, invited me out and we had a chat about a number of things. And one of her, this was her idea. She says, you know, we have this one book, one Nebraska. I think it would be great if we had the similar thing for kids. And I, I thought she had, she was onto something. So she had a suggestion for the first book that we chose for this um, program. And it was Rescue Josh McGuire by Ben Michelson. And so we picked that and we had it for a two year span. So that was 2007 to 2008. Because we, at that point, we were going to have one book for Nebraska kids, which is what Rescue Josh McGuire was. And then the next year, we were going to pick one book for Nebraska teens, so that we would have a new book every year. But one would be a kid's year, and one would be a teen's year. And the other book would just carry over until we picked a new one. And they um, alternated, yes. We, I remember that. We keep them because we think they're still good books for discussion. I mean, I keep, I mean, by keep them, they're still on the list, which We'll see later because Amy's going to show us all about the web page for this. And um, we started in 2017 picking a new, two new books each year, one for the kids and one for the teens, because I have several librarians asking me, please pick, pick and we need a new teen book every year. It would really help. So that's what we do. I hope that they're using them and um, I hope we're picking ones that they, that they really like. Speaking of which, another question I get is, how are these decided? Well, it's kind of gone through several changes through the years. At first, I had a youth advisory board for a number of years, and that was made up of librarians throughout the state who were uh, children or teen librarians or school librarians who gave me advice on different things. And, and sometimes I present a, a, an issue to them and they talk about it. But as time, and then they chose the book for teens mm -hmm. and kids. And as time went by, more people dropped off of this, and it was kind of hard to get this pulled together because we didn't have the Zoom option so so good back then. So then a special committee was formed for a few years, which was just the library commission staff and a couple of librarians out in the field who were still hanging in there with me. 
And now it's a small group of librarians here at the Library Commission who consider suggestions and we read the book and we make a decision about it together. And that's how they're chosen now. Um, if anyone wants to help decide this, you can sure let me know and we'll, we'll send you the list of books that we're considering and you can tell us your, your ideas and opinions about it. We were doing it by email for a few years just because that works best for the librarians and for me. So it could be any of those ways to do that. For the most part, when we choose the teen book, it's been more of a high school level title because that was also something that a number of librarians told me. They said, with the Golden Seller, we have the picture book, the chapter book, and the novels are really a middle school level and we don't have anything for high school level so we try it's not always the case but quite often it is a teen a high school level book and that's based on the kids in high school for one thing and it might be a slightly more mature um, thought or you know, issue that they're grappling with so um, that's kind of what our thinking is based on what librarians have told me and asked for the criteria for selecting a book for either the kids or the teen is pretty basic. And might, you might think it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's good to get it written down to remind people as we're considering titles. So we want them to be available in paperback. That's for us to put in our um, book club kit collection. And also anybody who thinks, well, you know, I'm just gonna buy 10 copies of this book and we're gonna talk about it at our school. That's great. It also needs to be of interest to the age group. Again, I said it would seem self-explanatory, but it's good to write it down. And this, the book needs to provide discussion because there needs to be some issues in there that may um, get people talking about the different sides of why the issue is a problem for the character. And then we did relate our fourth and final criteria is that if it's uh, for kids, one book for Nebraska kids, it cannot be a recent Golden Silver nominee because they're already getting uh, that book as a Golden Silver book and to, to make it a one book for Nebraska kids could either give it un an unfair advantage or it's kind of, you know, piling it on top of things. We want to get the kids looking at as many different books as we can, mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. not just the same one. So it's that. Now, um, the people who were in charge of the Golden Sower did say it's all right for the one book for Nebraska Teen Selection to have been a recent nominee because we weren't getting as many votes and there weren't as much activity with that one as there had been before, although I think that's slowly been increasing over the years. So we, um, and I think uh, it doesn't say this here, but one of the nice things about the one book for Nebraska Kids and Teens is it doesn't have to be a new book. It can be a new book. If it's a, yeah. What do you find is recent? How many years mm -hmm. back can we go? We can make it whatever we want. I'm so evil. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's open to interpretation. For example, our one book for Nebraska teens for next year was a golden, no, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was, was a golden tower nominee mm -hmm. several years ago. In 2015. But it's been long enough yeah. that the kids who would read it now wouldn't have read it then. That's, that's really the then. criteria. Yeah, so really probably like three years, rough guess. Um, I guess high school is four years, but you know. By the time it's a, a nominee, officially, it's been around a couple, a year or two already. So um, that's pretty much my background. If you have any questions as to anything I've said so far, or you want to know something I haven't covered, just ask. We'll be happy to answer your questions. But I'm going to ask Amy to guide us to the to the web page for one book for Nebraska Children. All right, this is our, our home page at the commission. And if you go to Children in YA, you can find the different programs that we went to, um, Golden Star, and then Read Aloud Nebraska, and then the one book for kids and teens. Um, and it's got the, the histories that Sally mentioned um, starting in 2017. Um, we used to have every selection on this page and you had to scroll all the way to the bottom, but I have taken those off and I've moved them to a different page. So if you are looking for past years, you can jump here and it will show you 
the book from the beginning. Mm -hmm. oh, but no. that way, we don't have to have as much scrolling as we did in your past. Um, I think that's a good change. That's helpful. It makes the page a lot less busy. So right now, we have the current yearbook, which are Harvey Me by Jacqueline Woodson and Piecing These Together by Renee Watson. This is 2021. And then we have next year's book that we have chosen with a little less detail. We still need to fill those in. Um, but then you can be prepared for the coming year selection. Um, and these include some activities, some author information, a discussion guide, um, and the link to the book club kit. So we do have at least 10 copies of each of these books that you can reserve. And you just go out to the book club kit and you can reserve these. And then there's some additional discussion questions. Um, most of these books, I believe, are available to talking book readers, which I know with some schools do have children in the talking book program. So those would be available, but you'd need to go through talking books to get those. That's always good to have, definitely. Yes. We try to always have that option, yeah. Uh, the book website, if you're in one, and she has. There it goes. <laughs> And then we've added some read alike books. So if you want this book for your class and it's not available, we've added some, some additional books that are very similar. So Jacqueline Woodson's Middle Grade, Realistic, um, some sympathetic characters, and moving tone. So some of these other books will have similar themes and writing styles. And these are all, all these books on the Read Alike page are book club kits as well that we have. So they would be available from us. That's very, yeah. I like that. That's, this is a new option. Yeah, yeah. And that page, if you're using our book club kit, I've tried to add Read Alike for many of our uh, book club kits, but not as many are the children and, and teen selections. We've been adding those towards the bottom. So yeah, so if your favorite selection is checked out, we do have other options for you, or we could recommend something. Um, each of the titles also has some puzzles that we've put together, uh, just some printouts that you can hand out to your class. There's a tile puzzle where you rearrange the letters to make a phrase. Crossword puzzle, a letter drop puzzle, where you drop, or should be a letter move up puzzle. Yes, I don't so. know why they put them in that order, but you just move the letters. One of these letters will fit in that row to make a phrase. From Not the necessarily in the lower order, but you just no, no, you have to figure that out. And a word search, just some pretty basic activities that you can do after reading the book. The answers are also there, but I'm not going to show you those because that's cheating. <laughs> We've done that for each of the books. Um, I don't currently have read alike for piecing me together, but I'm working on that list too. I know that's also been done for the upcoming book. Yeah. Amy's done all that work. I have to give credit where credit is due because Amy has done the puzzle for us and no. Found the discussion guides and also information and everything. It's, so. it's a hard job making games, but someone <laughs> has to do it. So. I appreciate that. Yeah. So if you have a couple of things, it, it, um, if you have ideas for a book that might be a good discussion book for kids or teens, send me an email and let me know. I'll just say, hey, I read this book and it's too late for it to be on the Golden Sower. Maybe it's you know a couple of years old, but I think it'd be a great discussion book and mm -hmm. we can consider that. And also, if you have a different kind of puzzle that you think would be great for us, for Amy to do, or you could do it. I'm not stopping people from making puzzles. Yes. If we're getting tired of, of crossword puzzles and word searches, we yeah. can come up with other options. Um, I did for this next year, we're doing The Adventures of Bean Boy, in which the uh, main character likes to make comics. So we included some, some blank comic templates. So 
kids can make their own comics or you can create superheroes or their own sidekicks. And uh, I'm looking for additional activities for each of these, just other ideas. So thank you. That's pretty, that, oh, that's cool, the, the comic one. I know that's been something that people have done is you know, sometimes for <coughs> programs or projects a make your own comic thing. Um, yeah. It's nice to have something that is uh, specifically related to what's going on in that book, not just the. Yeah. yeah. Which makes me think of something. I've been, as I consider things that we might want to read and, and look at as a next, as a, not now it'd be 2023 book. We haven't had a, a graphic novel yet no. as a one book for kids or teens. So uh -huh. I'm not against that, that. And you might find something that's just right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know you mentioned graphic, you include graphic novels in your lists for um, <clears throat> uh, best new teen reads and best new children's reads and um, summer reading program lists. Yeah. Yeah. So. I've, I've also, uh, over the years, been aware that our, our list was pretty white until we began to really consider books that represent other groups in our country. So we try to keep that in mind, too, as we're making suggestions to each other and, and uh, considering titles. So um, this year we have um, Minnie Watson's book. The black main character and the Harbor Me kids are a variety of kids. Um, so I think there's six in the class. There are. It's a pretty diverse class. There's uh, there's one from, from the Dominican Republic, and then there's a couple of black children and various backgrounds. So yeah, it's a nice mix. So I'm trying to be as broad as possible for ideas of what people might want to consider a good choice for the kids or teens to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we want to open them up to even more, you know, titles they might not have thought of uh, yeah. reading themselves, topics they might not have thought of reading themselves, yeah. yeah. So I bet now after this session is over, everybody's going to go to this page and go down to the oldest book and look up through there and see how long it was. Um, Jason Reynolds' book was an early, earlier one that we chose for the teens. I think it was, um, there it is, The Boy in the Bag. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that year, A Long Pitch Home, that boy was from Pakistan. Pakistan. Yeah. That's another thing, boy main characters, girl main characters. We try to mix that up too. It's kind of tricky to get everything yeah. in there that so we're not always doing white girls who want to date somebody. I think it's great if white girls want to date somebody, yeah. but not always for our book. No, and I that's what I enjoyed about uh, this year's collection, keeping me together, is that there really is no like romantic element. It's really mm -hmm. more about her and her life and her friends and becoming who she wants to be. And there's not really any kind of like romantic subplot, which I think is unusual. I think it is for for teens. Yeah, that's true. Good point. And look, we have tile puzzles and letter drop puzzles, mm -hmm. or letter up puzzles. Yeah, you want to call it. <laughs> I just picked those around. I wanted to do out of my mind, like the year it came out. Such a wonderful book. And then it went on the golden silver list, and I, I said, at the meeting, I said. I'm going to vote for this, but I just want you to know what a sacrifice it is for me not to have it. <laughs> they laughing at me. <laughs> now, we, now we got it. A number of years since it had been on the list. Yeah, that was really. We had girl, girl, girl that year. Mm -hmm. The boy, boy, the year before. Um, True. The boy, the bear. And this was a Native mm -hmm. American author and protagonist. Mm -hmm. okay. Jason Reynolds book was was a good in that but I must have lost my train of when things happened. I was thinking it was last year so. <laughs> so it's I think it's interesting too that how um you know in one book programs they do it um like you said at the beginning, Sally, the idea of all these kind of one book programs is something that will get people not just reading books but talking about them. 
and discussing. So they're not just, oh, it's a fun read or it was a good story. It's something to get people talking, really. Um, not necessarily controversial, but just interesting. You know, some books lead themselves more to that than others, lend, lend themselves more to that than others. Um, so I think that's interesting that um, specifically, you know, if that's something you're looking for in your school or in your um, teen or children groups, um, something that will get them talking, not just, hey, here's a book you'll have fun time reading. This would be one of the, um, of the ones to look for, to look into, because they've been, you know, evaluated for that purpose, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Good point. We used to have a book discussion. Well, we used to have two book discussion groups here at the commission made up of staff. And one was what we could talk about books written for adults. Yeah, I didn't call them adult books. Books written for adults. And one was a group of people reading books written for children and teens. And we, I remember the children and teen group. I can't tell you the title of the book, but we had a book. Everybody loved it. Nobody had anything else to say about it. It was interesting. It was fun. It was unexpected but no one there was nothing else to yeah, discuss not about thought provoking yeah. no discussion. and we thought it was a great book and it was but it wouldn't be a good choice for this because yeah. how can you have a discussion in that case so yeah we try to find things that have you know like all use the word issues things that the, the protagonist is facing yeah and the challenge or in yeah. in the case of, of harbor me there's since there's six children they all have an issue so and it's how they relate to each other and how they have found this group that they can talk to their to uh about things that they wouldn't be able to talk to their friends about so maybe it's raised or having a parent in jail or having a parent deported or you know money problems things that they would not regularly be able to uh discuss with friends or even uh teachers or family and uh, i think a lot of kids face that in real life so yeah. And with that book, it was really interesting how the group got organized because actually the teacher had asked each of them to come with her to a, a classroom that nobody used, well, a, an art room or, yeah. or something. And one, for one hour every Friday, they went in there, there was no teacher, there was no thing to study, it was just their time to talk. And they were very suspicious <laughs> and i don't blame them because yeah. you know you have this secret in your heart and and you're not going to just blurt it out to a group of, of other people you don't know very well just because the teacher said now go in there and talk and so how their rapport built yeah. up is also a part of that made a strong book I think. yeah it was, that it was definitely a good choice um, and i think that it will Prompt a lot of discussions. Hopefully, it already has. Yeah, because it's yeah, it's in about. August already. But you can take that next year if you're, um, like you said, other titles here are. We don't have everything still in the collection. Like we, I don't know if we still have Rescue Josh McGuire in our collection. We might have it. I know we have some of his other books. But I, I want to say we do, but. I'm not sure if we I'm not, I'm not sure if we need to do a to everything or not if I need to go back and find everything. So I think that's a good point. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh sticked up. Oh that reminds me. When one of the times we talked about I think it says at the top. Yeah, it's on the page. The um the author of Stick Dog did this great presentation. And he shows kids how to draw stick dogs. And he talks about stick dogs. And it's a great thing. You can just show that anytime you want to, if you have kids coming after school to your library, or if you're in school and you want to talk about any of the stick dog books and, and have him talk and, and show you how to draw them. It was great fun. And he he contacted me and said, I see you're doing a program. Do you want me to come and be on? I said, sure. <laughs> what am I going to say no? <laughs> and that was just so fun. And that reminds me that I need to notify our authors that their book has been cho chosen for next year because sometimes I get all excited and I forget to do that. You know, I had one author who contacted me and said, is this real? <laughs> I was just going out looking under my name and I see my book's been chosen and I 
I was kind of embarrassed and I said, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Said, well, I want to come to Nebraska and give presentations. I said, sure. <laughs> That's, well, we were able to fund that and, and she was very reasonable. That was Ellen Plages, the green black tea. Oh, yeah. One that she did. So that was a reminder. I need to come. And I don't know, not every author maybe even gets my email. I tried to find their web page and then I sent a message to them to say, hey, we chose your, this book for our one book for Nebraska kids. Just thought you'd like to know. <laughs> you know, I'm telling everybody my mistake. No, that's okay. You know, nobody's perfect. No. <laughs> so um, I don't know if we have any questions yet because I'm pretty much pretty sure you could have jumped in if there was something people were asking. About. Yeah, no, I don't see anything. Yes, anybody does have any questions about um, the program um, or um, about how it works, uh, about either any of the books, um, maybe thought, um, or um, suggestions, as, as Sally said, for future books, definitely let us know. Um, you said um, there hasn't anything come, come in yet, but I will keep an eye on it. Uh, you did say, Sally, that there's a group of people, the, the people that pick the titles this year. Or that pick the titles now is um commission staff correct yes that's correct yes. um can can you talk a little bit about about why the particular titles were selected for um either 2021 or next year like what what discussion what were what you were thinking about each of these ones specifically well for the 2021 we were specifically thinking about um representing people of color mm -hmm. Um, people of another from another country, things like that. So that's how we ended up. We had several titles. So I was I try to pull several titles together for each group to see what we might think will make the best best choice. And I always check to be sure that they're available in paperback. On mm -hmm. um, so sometimes we'll save one for the next year because it's out and it's kind of new and uh, we have to wait for the paperback. But that's okay. We already have it on our list. So. Um, I had read piecing me together for my what um, team list, and really thought it was a, a good choice for. Um, I, I like how she was approaching her life. She was organized. Um, she was going to a school where um, it wasn't in her neighborhood, so she kind of had to be two people: one at home with her friends, and, and then a different person at the school. And she was working towards her goal when this mentor program came up. And she was a little irked. I like this part about it because she was a little irked about this mentor program because she was doing fine. Yeah. Mentors are for people who need some guidance and help. And I'm doing that. And she was doing fine. And her mentor was kind of taken aback, I think, a little bit by yeah, who she was and what she was working on and where she was going. But, um, it made her mentor think again. Yes. As, as someone who mentors uh, a younger girl, you learn a lot from each other, not just you imparting your wisdom or whatever. But yeah, so I, I feel like there was a, it was def definitely a two sided relationship. So that was good. And then, as we said earlier, the Harbor Me book um, really lends itself to discussion because of the kids in the room. And how they begin to trust each other and, mm -hmm. and share their stories, and how that helps them deal with their stories because they're able to share this with a small group who is absolutely determined not to say anything outside of that room on Friday, which would be a necessity for anyone to open up. So we thought that was, I can't remember the other book we were considering, but. Oh, yeah. It'll be on the list again. What yeah. <laughs> but um, this, so this one really looks selected. And the, the one for next year, the Adventures of Dean Boy, um, I just love the fact that um, this kid is determined to win a contest by coming up with the sidekick character for Dean Boy, who is a, a superhero type oh. character. Uh, Bean Boy is the sidekick that he comes up with. Oh, and so his favorite superhero, the comic book company is looking for a sidekick for the contest because he's 
and come up with the ultimate price tag for his superhero, which I believe was H2O, like a, a water based right. superhero, um, you could win a college scholarship. Yeah. And uh, which he's going to, his mother is in college. His parents are divorced, and his mother is in college and working um, all the time. And he thinks that if he can win this contest and get certain money, then all their problems will be solved. So you can tell it's been a little while since I've read Bean Boy. You can tell it's <laughs> last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he's he's such a um, interesting character because he sees how hard his mom is working to to make enough money so she can take care of her family and go to school and do all her work both for school and to support the family. And this was his idea to help her make her life a little easier. So some of the things that I liked about uh, the Avengers the Bean Boy was that uh, his younger brother has some developmental disabilities, but it's not portrayed in any kind of negative way. It's just no big deal. He's just part of their family. And they don't even really talk about what the specific, you know, what his condition is. He's just a little brother and, and he yeah, good thing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and also some of the um, other kids at school. There are, you know, the popular kids and, and the, the less popular kids, but um, the, the most popular girl in the school is really nice. And you don't see that a lot. A lot of times <laughs> the, the popular clique, they're kind of mean, and she is not. So I really appreciated how she really tried to, to help everyone out. So. That's a good point too. Yeah. You don't see that very often. No. It's nice to go against the stereotype. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm glad that someone's doing that, not the stereotype, because that's that's not how it is always. <laughs> I mean, just because they're most popular does not mean they're always going to be the mean people. It just in real life there's plenty of kids um like myself who've been in high school and then the popular people were not horrible so when you read those books where they're always that stereotype it gets kind of it's unrelatable boring i like i i don't want to read any of that it doesn't relate to me at all that's not where's the one that's about what happened to my high school <laughs> and i read again stupid fast is a book i read for our book list um well i think it was published in 2011 yeah right and then it was on the um, Golden Seller list in 2015. But I read it for my uh, teen book list back when it came out. And this character, wait a minute, Fenton, his first name is Fenton. He has always avoided the jocks because they pick on him. He was always a skinny kind of, I don't know, mealy mouth guy. And all of a sudden, he has more than blossomed he's just like boom he is stupid fast he's fast he's big he's strong he's developing into quite the man and and they are they want him on the team come on be on our football team we need you we need you you're great and he can't believe it he's like waiting for the other shoe to drop they're going to do something in a minute here and it's going to be bad and i'm going to really feel stupid but they don't they like him yeah if they put picks on him, they're no longer picking on him. He's the hero. He's the, the one the girls are interested in yeah. suddenly, and it's quite a change. So, but the other side of that change is, as he's suddenly become much more manly, so to say, his mother is really distancing herself from him a lot, and she's curt with him and short, and and he doesn't understand why. She's always been loving. She loves his younger brother, still loves him. Why, why, what's wrong with me all of a sudden? And it's not till further in the book that you find out that issue. So mm -hmm. there are, again, things to discuss. And at what, I can't remember at what point he actually begins to trust the guys on the team because I, I still think for a while he was kind of like, okay, this is going on a long time, but they're still going to get me, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and it kind of oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, the other shoe's going to drop at some point. <laughs> he does start to embrace the popularity and the, uh, the, the, the T 
team mentality, but then a couple of things go wrong and he kind of falls back into that pit of despair and feels rejected. So he kind of goes back and forth. And so he's got a lot of self doubt that he has to overcome. That's true. And there's a couple more books after this one. I haven't read either of them yeah. yet. There's two or three more books. So that's another thing that's nice if you pick one that they first the reader get interested in the character, they can go on and find out more about. Uh, so it's part of a series now. Yeah. Yeah. Bean Boy does have a follow up as well. Mm -hmm. I haven't read that. So yeah. yeah <laughs> so you get a good start and then you can just go on if you want. Yeah. So uh, I didn't realize Bean Boy had another title. See, I'm out of the loop. I'm blanking on the title of something cool beans or something oh, like that. That's right. Yeah, I remember him. <laughs> nice. So um, someone does want to know, and they, they're um, newish to this. Um, can you explain a bit about the book club kits, how that works? Sure, good idea. So we'll look for at um, keep it fast here. So if you go to, yeah, let me go back to our book club kit page where you can see the whole thing. You go to collections and you can go to book club kit. And this is our main page. Um, the rules for use are here. If you are, it can be checked out by a librarian in the Nebraska Library at the Media Center. So if you are a teacher, you do need to go through your school librarian or media specialist because we will mail them directly to the school library or to the public library. Um, there's no standard checkout time. So if you want them for six weeks, you can do that. If you only need them for a couple of weeks, uh, we are pretty flexible. We mail them to you and you mail them back unless you are in the area and can pick them up and drop them off. They have a little postage, but we pay for it to get to you and you pay for it to come back to us. Um, so, and if you have any questions, just give us a call or you can email the information services team. Uh, and if, if we have, if we are out, some other libraries in the state do lend books and you can use two other libraries and you can contact them and it's separate from ILL. So you would just go directly to that library and not do interlibrary loan. But anyway, our main book club page, you can search by author, title, genre, keyword, grade level. Uh, or you can just browse. So we do anything we've added recently. We'll we'll go in here. So we've been adding a lot lately. So, oh. but for something like, I think that's the only stupid one. You would just find the book, request it. What library is is requesting it? Your name and email. Um, if you have a second or third choice, this might be where the real life pages come in. Yeah or uh, how many copies you need. So in this case, we have 10 copies. It should say how many are available for that particular kit. Um, are there very many kits that we have more than 10? Um, Does it just depend? It just depends. Our book club kits, a lot of times we don't buy new. We have been doing that more lately with some extra funds. But a lot of them come from book sales or donations or used bookstores. So it really just depends on uh, the demand for it and uh, how many you can get a hold of. So there's not always enough for 10 or we might find a single copy here or there. But then, yeah, the day that you want to hand them out, we try to mail them a week before this date, the day that they would do, and, and uh, when we'll be finished, we try to give you an extra week to mail them back and, and any additional information. We just uh, fill that out and it comes with an email to the reference team and we will respond to you. The only thing about the book club kits is it will not tell you if it's available or not, which is why that second or third choice comes in handy because uh, this, this doesn't integrate as well with our circulation system. So there's no way to tell if a particular title is checked out at the time. But we'll go back and forth. This is a small enough collection that we can just deal directly with those issues as they come up. So. But yeah, they're uh, they're available to all schools and libraries and book clubs. Well, I see, I'm just looking up there. I see it says number one in the Felton Reinstein trilogy. So yes. there are three books. Yeah, and and when we know that it's part of a series, we add it to our um, books and series database. 
Um, so yeah, you can see those three books there, or you can search by any author, book title or series, and we try to, I think of one that we would know of, how about Diaries of Wimpy Kid? Oh, and this is not our book club kits anymore. This is telling no, you. this is a different what is that we offer books are. So if you want to know what are all the series at this point. Yeah, I mean, we add to this um, constantly as well. So anytime if you need to want to read a, a series in order, we try to keep track of all the series. want to read it out of order. Um, it's just wrong. I, I just mean I think it came about through talking books because talking books you can request a series may not always be mailed to you in order just because of the way that the computer generates the mailing list it might you might get books out of order and this way you can request specific titles to make sure that you're following your series and that's what those db numbers after some of the books are that those are a uh, a talking book reference number yeah, that's a good that I'm glad that you showed that too. I know that our books and series database is something that a lot of libraries and people have mentioned commented to us that they depend on it a lot to just to look up and figure out. Um, is there more than one? Did I miss one? What's the next one that I need to make sure I get my hands on? <laughs> yeah, if there's, if there's questions about book clubs, we are um, available by email or phone to answer those too. So. And it is one of our most popular uh, programs or, or services we offer, I think. So many in there, and I don't know how many titles we're at now, um, but it's huge. <laughs> it's somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000, I'm not sure. <laughs> wow. yeah, I, I, remember, I remember when we broke 1,000, it was a big deal, yeah. and then it just, just kept going and going, and I'm like, yeah. just even yeah. more than that, isn't it now? <laughs> And these are for all types. You know, this is you know we're talking about the books for kids and teens today specifically, but it's um it, the book club kits um, cover all types of of um, all genres and all levels of reading and yeah. Fiction, nonfiction, adults and children. I would say adults or, or adult books are definitely the majority of the collection, but we do try to add Golden Thrower nominees and uh, classics and other things for for schools and and kids. Right, yeah, whenever there's anything, the Golden Solar books, the obviously, you know, we're talking today, the one book, Kids and Teens, um, the one book, Nebraska, you know, when that becomes, you know, whenever those titles are picked, uh, I'm not sure if we do the one, I know Lincoln and Omaha do one book programs too, I'm not sure if we also try to get those or not. I think it depends on the year, I know that this year, the, uh, the Omaha Read book, we do have that. Um, Sometimes we have it, just yeah. already have it by coincidence yeah. <laughs> yeah i think it was a coincidence but yeah we do have that one because it was a new book and it was popular so but yeah it just depends <laughs> and it depends on how much uh if we have in our budget to yeah. add to the collection definitely so that's we'll have our, our yes. library science collection is yeah. rather too Mm -hmm. and I know that's something that is uh, it's being um, increased again right now the book club kits due to um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission we were awarded uh, funding for the American Rescue Plan Act ARPA through Museum of Library Institute of Museum and Library Services and part of that funding was going to lots of different things here at the Commission but one of them is these book club kits so you know more titles are either more titles being added or more copies of certain really popular ones so we have more um, sets to go out and more copies to go out. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Although now you say we're running out of shelf space, so that that is an issue. <laughs> well that's something I don't know what we can do about that. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a common library problem, I think. But and, and you know, then I know what you say is, well, do some weeding. Yeah, this is something you can't really weed. That's kind of, it's a different type of uh, set of things, but it's all right. <laughs> Um, all right. Does anybody have any other any other questions about um, the? I guess you know. Get back to what we're talking about here. The uh, one book for Nebraska kids and teens. <laughs> um, type into the questions section. We can answer any questions you may have. Or send me a suggestion. You can, if you have one in your mind right now, you can just type it in there. Yeah. If anybody has any thoughts for some books that you might think would be good for this program, and as as you know, as we've seen here, if you go back to the main page, we do have 2021 and 2020, 2021, obviously, 
was already selected because that's the year we're in. 2022 is already selected, but uh, 23 would be the next year when we'd be um, looking for a title. Um, but that yeah. wouldn't probably get decided. When do these get decided for the next year, actually? That's a good question. Somebody just asked. I yeah. was just going to say that because um, for a while it was supposed to be announced in January, and then I'd get organized and start having people read things in January, and that's too late. We need a whole year, so we're trying, trying to be better about um, having ideas out the year before. So we'll probably start thinking about it. Well, summer works great for me because nobody wants to hear from me in summer. They're all running their summer reading program, and <laughs> I don't have to, I have to catch up on other things. But that's a good time for me to ask people to help yeah. read the titles and discuss it. So like we have just come up with this. So August, so yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, we like to have it by um, conference because for a while we were kind of announcing it at conference. We have our new title for 2020. Right, right, right. Our Nebraska Library Association annual conference usually is in October, and it is this year too. Yeah. Right. So that that was a good um, marker for me to remember. If I have, if we have all of our reading and our decision making done by then. Why not put them up on yeah. the page so people yeah. will know, hey, you know, let's do Bean Boy next year because that'll be a good one for whatever time of year you you think that will work for you. Then you can get your name on the list. How, how far ahead can they ask for a book? Uh, um, we send reservations up to a year in advance. Some, we have um, some libraries and book clubs that will plan out their entire year and send mm -hmm. us their list of titles and we can kind of um, rearrange when shuffle is needed to to make the reservation fit uh, what we have in stock. But yeah, we, we take them quite a bit in advance. So that's good. Yeah. That. So probably like next summer, start working on what would be uh, for 2023. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm talking June. <laughs> Because obviously, you know, we talked about this being ready for conferences in October, until October, but we've got it now. It's just whenever the decision is made, it's it's done, and then start putting the information up and getting all the doing all the creative stuff with the puzzles and the all of those things. Uh, another place that this you can find the same information is out on the Nebraska Center for the Book page. Um, I know the One Book One Nebraska site. Tessa has added a kids, kids and teens oh, section, which has our titles. Nice. Has our information out there as well. Oh. The page is prettier. <laughs> That's good to have that there because I know in um, some states they've oh, they they've had there's whenever there's a one book one Nebraska or one book one state there's a companion book announced at the same time for the kids or the teens other states they do it differently each state is different there's not a national program for this so it's just you know <laughs> do it how you do it so I'm glad they've added our the teen and kids one onto there too so if you're wondering you know I want to read the one book for adults but what about my kids? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for showing that. More was there, I just hadn't really looked. So. And as you can see, they're totally different programs. One Book, One Nebraska um, is it's, it's through Nebraska Center for the Book. Uh, yeah. Nebraska Kids and Teens is through us, the Library Commission, but we work with them, so obviously yeah. we. Yeah, she just linked yeah, back to our stuff, and, but also to uh, World Cat, mm -hmm. where you want to see if your like, local library has the book. And, and as you can see from the titles too, our kids and teens books are not necessarily related to the one book for Nebraska yeah. Um, yeah. adult title. They're all each their own thing. There's not like a annual theme or something like that that we do here. Yeah, that's a good point. And they, and they don't necessarily have to do anything with Nebraska. That's more the Nebraska Center for the Book Children and Teen Book Award. The, those are another whole nother Range oh, yeah. of things. And those need to be related to Nebraska, either an author who's lived in Nebraska or is set in Nebraska, or to Nebraska publishers, something like that. The, the Golden Flower Awards. Yeah. yeah. So different different awards, different criteria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I think we Pretty yeah. much that was most of what we had to say. Yeah.
Yep, and we answered some questions people has. Um, does anybody, have, we are getting almost up to the top of the hour again, 11 a.m. Central Time. We did start a little late today, so we don't have to wrap up if people still have questions or anything. So, um, but if you do want to get your um, last minute questions in to, for Sally and Amy, get them typed in and we can answer any of those. Um, we did have a few, so we did answer some people's questions. That's great. Um, any last words while I'm waiting to see if anything comes in? Less, less comments from you, Sally and Amy? <laughs> Well, I just hope that people think of the one book for Nebraska kids and teens when they're thinking about a book club set for their program that they might be doing at their library or at their school. And also, I'm, I will say again, please send me your ideas mm -hmm. of possibilities for the future, titles, genres. Like I said, we don't have a graphic, haven't had a graphic novel yet. I probably should have chosen New Kid or something. It's not too late. No. Did it learn something now? <laughs> Newberry? Yeah. Look, it doesn't say anything about here. It can't win the Newberry. No, and I think. <laughs> so those are okay. Yes. <laughs> and there's a Newberry honor. So. Yeah. And it's a Coda Scott King yeah. award, too. So. Awesome. These, right. these criteria are up for um, editing or revisiting. Mm -hmm. If you think that we need to be stricter about something or more open about something, you can let me know that too, because these are what we set up many years ago when we first started the program. Time to change. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, um, okay. Um, looks like we didn't have any other questions. Just a comment. Um, uh, Aaron from uh, Lexington School says, thank you. I'm looking forward to participating this year. Awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And that's great. This is for, it's not just a specific public library thing. It's, you know, schools, mm -hmm. libraries, anything. That If you got teens or kids reading books, this is a program you can do. Yeah. And if all you want to do is mention books and say, here's the, here's the uh, word search puzzle for this book. Go ahead and do it if you want to. That's true. That's why they're up there for however you want to use some of what we have on the page. Help yourself. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that's cool about this too. I know um, that basically what we do, what you you do, I don't, <laughs> is pick the title and put together some activities and things in the book discussion. So make it available to you and make it you know something you can do. And then you can take that and go with it and do whatever you want. Right. Um, however you want to use it, use some of it, um, hold whatever um, events you want related to it if you do, um, whatever discussions you want. Um, it's, you know, we just provide you with the resources and then you can just go with it. Yeah, do whatever you want. And if you come up with an activity or an event that's particularly successful and you want to share it, we would definitely take those ideas as well. So, nice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, if you come up with something that's so, so successful that you just, you know, libraries are always sharing with each other tips that's and ideas true. and, or asking, what is a program I can do for this? Yeah, let us know and we'll um, share it. Absolutely. All right. I don't see any other desperate questions coming in, so I think we will wrap up for this morning. Um, thank you so much, Sally and Amy. I am going to pull presenter control back to my screen here. There we go. You're it away from me, but that's okay. Huh? I said you're stealing the control away from us, but that's okay. I that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to do some of my wrap up here. Yeah. So. Um, that will wrap up for today's show about our one book for Nebraska kids and teens. Um, the show it has been is being recorded and will be on our website. Um, this is our main page for Encompass Live. If you just Google Encompass Live, you'll find us. Um, our upcoming shows are listed here. Um, and I'll mention here, because we were just talking about it, we do have a show coming up in September on um, manga and graphic novels in your library. Um, Brooke Zarko from our Blair Public Library and Technology Center here in Nebraska is going to do a presentation um, about that. So, you know, if you are looking for graphic novels for your kids and teens or adults as well, this is not specific, but that might be a good session to um, watch. Um, so recordings will be available here. Here's our archive links here underneath the list of our upcoming shows is linked to our archives. Our most recent show is at the top of the page always. And uh, 
So today's will be there. Should be up by the end of the day tomorrow, as long as everything cooperates, all the technology cooperates. There will be a link to our um, the recording on our YouTube channel, and the link will be, uh, with, there's no presentation for today's show, but the link, as you see here for the session um, description, the link to the Nebraska um, Kids and Teens, One Book for Nebraska Kids and Teens website here, so you can get, um, pop over to that from the archive as well. Um, in our show archives here, um, I'll show you, we do have a search feature, so you can search any of our, our full archives to see if you um, any had, if we've had any topics um, shows any topics you may be interested in. You can search the whole archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something just recent. Um, and that is because this is our full show archives going, I'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom. You can see this is a long, long list. Um, this goes back to the very beginning of when Encompass Live premiered, which was in January 2009. So we have where. 12, 10, 12 years worth of recordings up here. Uh, so just do pay attention when you are watching a recording to the original broadcast date. Um, they're all dated when they first were um, done. Uh, some shows were, will stand the test of time and still be good, useful information. Some things may become old and outdated and um, resources may have changed drastically. Some links might not work anymore. Things may disappear, um, but just pay attention. Here's one for Nebraska kids and teens we did in 2019. Just coincidentally, where I scrolled back down. Uh, so we've got previous shows on here too. So feel free to watch any of our archives. Um, let me go back to our main page. Um, I also wanted to, we do have a Facebook page. We link off of everywhere. If you do like to use um, a Facebook, you can give us a like over there and we do reminders. Here's a reminder to log into today's show. Um, information about our presenters, when our previous recordings are available, so we all update things on here. Uh, we also do post on to Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you want to just follow us there, uh, look for our hashtag EncompLive. You'll find things that the Commission posts, the Nebraska Library Commission posts about the show onto those social media type places. Um, when the recording is ready today, everyone who attended this morning and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's ready. Um, we also push that out on our uh, mailing list as well. Um, and next week is actually coincidentally kind of related to some things we're talking about today, book club kits. <laughs> uh, next week's show is our Pretty Sweet Tech. The last Friday, last Wednesday of every month is always Pretty Sweet Tech when um, Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, comes on the show and talks to us about things tech related. But her topic for this month is tech friendly book club ideas. So um, basically, um, we want to learn about technology, do a book club discussion about something that is techie related. So definitely, you know, if you're into, you know, looking for some new titles or new ideas for what to do with your book club, join us for next week's show. And um, you can set for any of our other shows. Um, the dates, you, you see, I've got some of our dates filled in here. I've got a few more that I'm finalizing some information on. So keep an eye on the web, on this website for when things are filled in. Um, you will notice here, too, we mentioned the Library um, Association Annual Conference in October. That is the one week of the year we do not hold Encompass Live. So no Encompass Live the week of October 13th. Go to the, if you are in Nebraska, <laughs> attend the Nebraska Library Association Conference instead that week. So that wraps up for today's show. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, Sally and Amy, for telling us all about the uh, current and upcoming book books for our kids and teens. I think it's going to be a fun year. <laughs> all right, and we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.